One of the things that I, I love about my job is seeing someone use Creative Cloud to do something truly innovative and new. Um, one project that definitely fits this description is the animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is actually slated for release on December 14th. The Spider-Man movie promises to look unlike any other animated film you've seen. The film's art direction and design team spent years behind the scenes creating this new Spider-Verse. They applied classic techniques to their work in Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, and other Creative Cloud applications to create these characters and environments that audiences have just not seen before but still ring true to the comic book world. Uh, later today, we actually have uh, production, production designer Justin K. Thompson and other members of the film's team to deliver a behind-the-scenes look at making the movie and how they use Creative Cloud to achieve the film's unique design. And today, we have an exclusive clip of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Quick reminder, this is an exclusive clip for you, so recording is not permitted. You know, please put away electronic devices. Just enjoy this cool scene. Uh, let's roll the video. My name is Peter Parker. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I did a Christmas album, and a so-so popsicle. But this isn't about me. Not anymore. Spider-Man swings in once a day, zip zaps up in his little mask and answers to no one. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know, Dad. You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I, I wanna hear it. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's a copy. My name is Miles Morales. Brooklyn! I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. You ever hear of the Super Collider? You're gonna love this. Dimension opening now. You're like me. That's impossible. All right, kid, listen up. This fry is your universe. It's soggy, it's weird, it's gross. And this delicious normal fry is my universe. So you want to learn to be Spider-Man. Can you teach me? Yes, I can. Time to swing. Ah, Good, doing you're doing it. it. Double tap to yeah. release and whip it out again. Okay. Whip and release. You're a natural. Whip. Hey, guys. Who are you? I'm Gwen Stacy. I'm from another, another dimension. How many more spider people are there? Hey, fellas. Hello. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. Okay. We need to get back to our universes soon. Brooklyn is gonna collapse. My family lives in Brooklyn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles, what's wrong? This was never your city. It's mine. If I don't destroy the collider, none of us will have a home to go home to. Remember, what makes you different? Let's go! Is what makes you Spider-Man. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? That way, that way. Ooh. Other way, other way, other way, other way. Do animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to freak them out. <laughs> Pretty exciting. <laughs> so, so let's talk about our pro video tools. Uh, Video professionals are now creating for more channels than ever before. You know, and have to make their work look good, whether it's a 60-foot movie screen or a six-inch phone. But it's a lot of work. You know, that's why we're so focused on innovations within our video tools that automate tedious tasks, create smarter workflows, and leave video professionals more time to be creative. And the video industry is embracing this approach. Over the past year, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Character Animator, and other Creative Cloud apps have been used for acclaimed shows like Atlanta and Stranger Things, Childish Gambino's landmark video, This is America, and feature films like Searching. So please welcome the one and only Jason Levine to share news about our pro video tools. Jason. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Hello. Lovely to be back on the Mac stage. I have so, I'm so excited to share with you some of my favorite features 
in Premiere Pro and After Effects today. And we're going to start by talking about some of our new color workflows in Premiere Pro. Now, it's going to begin with the Lumetri Color Panel with something called Auto Color Match. Powered by Adobe Sensei, this incredible feature will automatically take the color and light, even skin tones, from any reference video or image and automatically apply them to your video. So here we have, on the left, my reference, my hero footage. This was shot in Los Angeles here on the beach, and this is what I want my footage to look like. So I've been cutting together this little scene of beaches along the west coast of California. So up in Northern California, I wasn't able to really capture the Santa Cruz ocean that I wanted. So where did I turn? Of course, no further than Adobe Stock, where with our millions and millions of 4K and HD videos, I found exactly the one that I wanted. But the color wasn't quite right. And I'm not a professional colorist. I talk about this openly all the time. And for me to try and match that reference would just take an enormous amount of time if I could even do it at all. Well, now I don't have to. I can simply go to Color Wheels and Match. I can click on Apply Match. Sensei analyzes my reference and <laughs> instantly matches the color. Just yes! Yes! Before! No! After! Terrible. They can't all be winning singing notes. But your matches can be winning. All right. Now that's an automatic fix. Let's go ahead and switch to something that's a little more manual here. I'm going to switch out of this look here. I'm going to go into our window menu. We're going to go into workspaces. I'm just going to switch to selective here. And now I'm going to go into something new. Five new color curves, which we're referring to as selective color grading. This is going to give you complete precision control over hue, saturation, and light. Now, we didn't simply want to give you five curves that you have in other applications. No! We wanted to give you something new. We wanted to reimagine how to use these curves. We wanted to guide you, to teach you how these very advanced things work for new users so that you can begin to understand color. And for the professionals, give you a little something extra, that same precision that you expect, and that way to really make your colors pop. So in this footage here, I want to simply saturate the skin tones and saturate the blue in the sky. So for that, I'm going to use Hue versus Sat. I'm going to take the familiar Adobe eyedropper, and I'm going to click right on his cheek and when I do that, you'll see that we're presented with three control points. And I'm going to begin to raise and go above the line and raise that control point, and you can see that I'm saturating the skin tone. And if I go below the line there, I am now desaturating the skin tone. But I want you to pay attention to that vertical line. It's actually showing you what's happening. You can see up, saturated into the oranges, down, desaturated. Yes, it's guiding you and teaching you. Let's do the same thing for the sky. I'm going to click into the sky here. Let's take that same control point. You can see, moving towards the blues. And if we want to move those hues more into view, we've got this lovely slider, which is going to let us do that. Another unique feature here, all right? And very quickly now, I realize that's good, but I want more color contrast. I want more drama, more drama in the blues of the sky. I need to adjust the luminance. So for that, we're going to use hue versus luma. Let's take our familiar Adobe eyedropper. Let's click into the sky right here. And now, when I click on that center control point, what is it showing me? It's showing me luminance values. As we go north above the line, it's brightening the blues. But I don't want that. I want it to darken those blues, to give me more of that color contrast, more drama. I can play this back beautifully in real time. You even have the ability to layer these in the Lumetri control panel brilliantly, easily, efficiently, hue versus sat, and hue versus luma with these new five selective color grade tools. Now, in this shot here, we have our skateboarder who's skating across the night sky in New York City. And just as with before, I simply wanted to add a little more drama, all right? I love the lighter blue going into the darker blue, but what if I could adjust the hue of the actual sky, create like a natural gradient? Well, for that, I'm going to use hue versus hue. So we take our familiar eyedropper, we click into the blue of the sky, and now, once again, teaching you, guiding you, reimagining color curves, it's showing you the colors that we're going to move towards as we go north above the line. We're going into the greens and the yellows and the oranges. And if we go south of the line, we're going to move into the magentas. And now when I play this back, look at what it has done. It's created this beautiful gradient 
as she skates across my lens, creating that drama, creating the beauty, giving us a little something extra. It's five new selective color grading curves, and the best thing about it is it's also available today in After Effects. Yes! Ugh. Ugh. Which is the perfect segue to After Effects. Now, in this particular thing here, I'm going to show you something new. Now, this is a feature that will be coming to a future version of After Effects. And as many of you know, we will often take technologies from one Adobe application and place them in another. So today, it is my esteemed pleasure to be able to showcase to you content-aware fill for video in After Effects. So here, yes, yes, that's super cool. All right, so wait for it. So here, what we want to do is we want to take the horse out, right? So similarly with images, how do we do that? All right, well, first we need to create some kind of a mask. We need to poke a hole in it. So here I've got a mask, and I used a very simple elliptical mask. Now, yes, you could have used the pen tool. You could have used the roto brush for a more accurate one. I didn't even do that. Simple elliptical mask, which I then tracked with four simple keyframes. Now, once I do that, all I have to do is click on Generate Fill Layer. And when I do this, after Effects is going to begin analyzing all of that content and filling it in just as we know with images. Now, this is nothing new. We've been doing this, with We've been doing this in video today for ages. But how do we do it? We export TIFF sequences, Targa sequences, and then we bring those frames in, frame by frame into Photoshop, fix them, and send it back. But we no longer will have to do that with Content Aware Fill coming to After Effects. Here it comes. It's finishing up. I can feel it. It's so powerful. Horse free. The horse is gone. Oh. Oh. But there's a problem. Our little horsey friend has left some remnants. Perhaps not the ones you're thinking of. They're sometimes messy creatures. No, I'm talking about little horsey hoof prints here and dust. We need to get rid of that. We want a nice, clean backing plate. So to do that, I'm simply going to select all of my layers here, and I'm going to pre-compose this. OK, just like that. Once I do that now, I'm going to take my eraser tool, I'm going to double click in here, and I'm simply going to paint out, again, creating that hole, telling After Effects what it needs to fill in. I'm going to click on Generate Fill Layer and let it do its thing. Now, in the essence of time, I've already done it for you. So here is the finished version. Horse removed, footprints removed, dust removed, just like that. Yes! <laughs> After Effects doing the work for you. So what have we seen very quickly today? First, true Adobe innovation with Auto Color Match, powered by Adobe Sensei. True Adobe Precision with the five new selective color grading curves. And true Adobe Magic with Content Aware Fill coming soon to a future version of After Effects. Thank you very much. I just want some of whatever Jason is having. That is awesome. Uh, so, so thanks, Jason. What he showed us is just the beginning. Uh, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Edition are, are all jam-packed with great new features available today. I hope you check them out. A quick thought, but uh, you know, just for a moment, on the power of, of new technology. You know, our teams are excited about features like content-aware fill in Photoshop and After Effects and other editing features that save professionals a lot of time by removing objects from their work. At the same time, we understand that this technology prompts new and important questions about how we can make sure it's used responsibly and how we can also use technology to detect when content has, in fact, been edited. So we are always working and talking with partners, media companies, and others about how to address these important issues, and we will continue doing so. Now, we did not get a chance to show you some of the amazing additions we've made to our animation tools. So that includes additions like Characterizer, uh, a part of Character Animator uh, that lets you almost, let's almost take almost anything, you know, and, and um, or anyone, let, lets anyone create an animation using an image and movement of their own face and head. It's pretty mind blowing, so you should check that out. We've, we're also working hard to create smoother workflows from our animation tools into other parts of Creative Cloud. So some great stuff hitting our animation tools. 
So tools like Premiere Pro and After Effects are great for professionals working in a traditional video workflow. But in the past few years, a new breed of video storyteller has emerged. Their studios are living rooms, city streets, and skateboard parks. In short, wherever they find themselves. And their post-production facility may be their phone while they're bumping along a bus in Peru. These creators may not have the same resources as studios like Disney or Netflix, but they're just as committed to quality, and they have the creative freedom to explore any subject that interests them. So I'm happy to welcome to the stage one of the leaders of this new generation of video storytellers, Lily Singh. Also known as Superwoman, Lily's funny and insightful YouTube videos have been viewed more than two billion times. Her memoir, How to Be a Boss, was a national uh, bestseller, New York Times bestseller. And we're going to see a few highlights of Lily's work and then welcome her to the stage. So let's roll the video. We only go on the Fallon show for the first time once, and we need to enjoy every single moment. Team Super, we are in this together. I'm just be myself and be me. So that's completely just me being like, yo. Yes, I talk about the rock like this. Yes, I have crushes. Yes, I'm thirsty and I'm proud. <laughs> what about when it's your girl Super? When I'm here with my boo thing, my hubby, my poppy, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Get over here. Come over here. Hey. Until tomorrow when more stuff is going to happen because stuff happens every day. Why? Because we fill every day with stuff. Meow. Welcome, Lily. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so weird. <laughs> things are bigger on the screen. I know, it's um, super weird, bigger. Still getting over it myself, actually. So, uh, so thanks for joining us. Thanks, I'm psyched to be here. This is super cool. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, so you began making YouTube videos in 2010. Mm -hmm. so what inspired you to start? Well, in 2010, I was finishing up university, and perhaps you can relate, perhaps not, but I was very confused about what I wanted to do in life. You know, I had no idea what degree I was getting and what I was going to do with it, but I know when I was younger, I used to be really creative. And as I grew older, I was somehow convinced that I could no longer be creative, and I had to get a very serious professional job. Um, at that time, I discovered YouTube, and it got me out of the dumps. In this time when I was really feeling low and feeling dark, I created a video, and by making other people laugh, I made myself laugh. And more than anything, I gained a community. And um, when, you're, when you're setting out to, to make a video, mm -hmm. what do you try to accomplish? And also, how has that changed over the years as you've become you know, more known? What do I try to accomplish? Uh, not sucking. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> the internet can be pretty harsh. When I first started making videos, it was simple. Just figure out what I wanted to do. Do I want to make tutorials? Do I want to make comedy videos? Do I want to do music? And so I was just trying to find my bearings a little bit. Once I got used to the idea of doing comedy and sketches and rants, I thought, okay, how can I convey important messages that I actually believe in? You know, I think comedy is a really great vehicle for communicating messages such as a gender equality and simple things like loving yourself. I just wanted people to watch my content and feel good. You know? I feel it. Um, I'm an angel. <laughs> <laughs> Self-proclaimed. So, so, uh, so recently, we gave a, a sneak peek of a product mm -hmm. called Rush, which we're actually about to give more information on. Mm -hmm. But it's just this all-in-one video tool that brings some of the power of Pro Tools mm -hmm. into a, a more easily accessible product. Right. How do you think a tool like Rush will help this next generation of folks getting started with YouTube? Right, well, if you're anything like me, when I first started making videos, I had no idea what I was doing, especially when it came to editing. I was by no means an expert, and I was just looking for software that would make me seem like I knew what I was doing, you know, with powerful features. Especially the fact that Rush is available on desktop, mobile, and tablet, that's very much so capturing of the essence of post-production today. You know, my editor, he edits on a plane, in an Uber, in the middle of a party. Very fun to work for me. Uh, yeah, and it's everywhere. And so it just captures what post-production looks like today. So one final question. Mm -hmm. What is The Rock really like? <laughs> I think he works out. No, <laughs> truly, The Rock is phenomenal. Um, he is the perfect example of having a phenomenal work ethic, but also just being the most grounded, down-to-earth, kind human being. He should be everyone's role model. I'm here to just promote The Rock. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lily. I know thank you're going to be you here so tomorrow, much. so check Lily out. Thanks again. I'm for excited. Going. Thank you so much. Have fun. <laughs> so, uh, so we did uh, do a sneak preview of Rush a few months ago at the VidCon event, and it has been getting a lot of buzz with over 40,000 people 
requesting access to this beta. So I am thrilled to announce that we are officially launching Adobe Premiere Rush, and it will be available for download today. Rush is the perfect tool. Yeah, there we go. The team will appreciate that. Uh, Rush is the perfect tool for creators who approach video the way uh, Lily and so many others do. With Rush, you can assemble your footage on an iPad, do a first edit on your laptop, and adjust the sound mix on your phone. Rush leverages the power of our pro tools to refine motion graphics, color grading, and audio, and make this power accessible to all of us. It is the world's greatest multi-device video editing product. To hear more about Premiere Rush, please welcome my colleague, Danielle Darby. Thank you, Scott. I'm so excited to be here to share Premiere Rush with all of you today. Premiere Rush is an all-in-one video creation app for anyone that wants to tell a story with video, but maybe isn't a video, color, audio, or graphics expert. Premiere Rush makes it easy to create and share videos because it guides you through doing all of those things required to create awesome looking videos. And it's designed for today's storyteller. Now Rush works across all of your devices, your phone, your tablet, and your desktop. But let's take a look, starting here on my HP ZBook computer. So at a quick glance, you can see that it's a super clean interface that's really easy to navigate. Front and center, because it's all about your story, you've got a large preview of your video, and underneath that, all of the clips in the timeline that make up your story. Next to the timeline to help you work efficiently, you've got all of your editing tools, and on the right, all of your refinement tools to embellish your story along the way. Now here, I already have a video created in partnership with J.R. Ali. He's an emerging YouTuber and filmmaker. But we're going to recreate this entire video from scratch together. And to do that, I'm going to hop over to my iPad. So here on my iPad, once I launch Rush, it's really easy for me to jump right in. I have access to all of my projects, whether I've started here, on my phone, or on my desktop. Everything is synced to the cloud, so I can pick up right where I left off. It's also easy for me to start a new project. And once I do that, Rush is going to start guiding me through the process of creating my video, starting with picking my media. So here I have access to a variety of locations wherever my media might be, Creative Cloud, Dropbox, or right here on the device. Now, as I start tapping on assets here, you'll see that Rush is assembling my storyline for me, and I get a nice preview of that at the bottom of the screen. I'll add a few more assets here, and then we're going to name this project J.R. Ali. And then once I hit Create, Rush is going to create a project for me, assembling all of those clips that I just selected into a timeline so that I don't have a blank slate and I can quickly get into editing and creating my video. Now, we've really optimized the experience to take advantage of me now being on my iPad. So I can use my finger to scroll my timeline, and I could pinch to zoom in to get a better view. Now I'm going to start making some edits right with my finger in the timeline. And as I'm doing this, you can see that Rush is helping me work really efficiently, sliding and moving everything down the timeline so that I don't have any gaps or have to take extra taps to move things around. Now, I really like this shot here. This is an awesome shot of JR. And I want to use this as my intro shot to my video. And because Rush's timeline is flexible, I can just drag this right on top of this other clip so I can use this as my intro shot, but still have JR speaking and introducing himself underneath that. So I'll make one last edit here. And now I'm about ready to add my soundtrack. And again, it's really easy for me to add media even in the middle of my project. I have access to that same variety of locations. And once I bring in my soundtrack, Adobe Sensei is hard at work underneath the hood determining what type of clip I just brought into the application. And if I open up the audio panel here, you can see it's already automatically detected this clip as a music clip. And Rush does this for every single audio clip I bring into the application. So if I tap on this clip here where JR is speaking, it's automatically detected it as a voice clip giving me contextual controls to help me refine my audio. So let's take a listen. Hi, my name is JR Allen. I'm a travel filmmaker based here in Toronto. Life's been moving pretty fast lately. So I'm going to take a pause there, because you may have noticed it's a little hard to hear JR speaking, especially when that music ramps up, because it's competing with the music. So one tap on that music clip, I can tap on Auto Duck, 
and it'll automatically lower the volume of my music anytime JR is speaking throughout my entire story. And I have control here to reduce how much the, the duck works, but you know, I've got some control. So let's take another listen to what that sounds like. Life's been moving pretty fast lately. In fact, let me show you what my year's been like so far. One tap fix, automatically fix that problem for me. I was pretty awesome. <laughs> I was able to hear JR speaking more clearly and audibly, and then it ramped up nicely when JR was no longer speaking. So without being an audio expert, Rush made it really easy for me to fix that audio issue. All right, so my video is coming together nicely, and now I want to add some extra polish and some extra oomph to my video. And one thing that often gets overlooked but really helps videos stand apart from all of the rest on your social media feed and make them look more professional is color. So in Rush, we make color really accessible and intuitive. So with this clip selected, I can tap on a preset and give this clip its own look and feel. And it doesn't stop there. I can continue honing and really building out this look and feel. I really want the colors to pop here. And once I find a look that I like, I can create this as a preset to reuse for other clips in my timeline or other videos I create. Super helpful if I'm trying to build my brand and look and feel on my social media channel. So we'll call this color pop. We'll save that as a preset. Let's go back to that intro shot of JR, apply that preset that I just created. Boom, it's automatically given it a nice color pop. All right, so my video needs just one last thing, and that's some nice graphics. Now, I'm not a designer or an animator, but Rush makes graphics accessible even for someone like me. So here in Rush's title panel, I have access to a bunch of beautifully, beautifully designed motion graphics templates. And if I don't find ones that I like here, I can search for hundreds more right in Adobe Stock from this panel. And once I find one that I like, all I have to do is just drag it right where I want it in my timeline. Let's take a look at this title. Hi, my name is JR Alley. I'm a travel filmmaker based here in Toronto. Life's been Awesome, so I really like that. It gives my video a nice professional look and feel. It animates in, animates out nicely. So now I'm just gonna customize this right here on the canvas. So we'll change this to JR's name. And then we're gonna go ahead and borrow his title that he uses on his YouTube channel, Stories Through My Lens. And these are fully customizable titles, so I can just pick this up with my fingers, scale it down, park it where I want it, and go over here in the edit panel and make as many adjustments as I want to really make this my own. So let's play that back one last time. Hi, my name is JR Alley. I'm a travel filmmaker based here in Toronto. Life's been moving. Awesome. So that gave my video a really nice professional look and feel. All of that shape reflow and animation was retained with my edits. So at this point, I'm ready to head back over to my desktop. And it's really easy for me to switch between my devices. Everything is seamlessly synced to the cloud, so I can pick up right where I left off on my iPad. And at this point, I can continue refining my video, adding transitions, doing more color or audio work, but I'm pretty happy with my video. I've got a nice looking video with great sounding audio, nice pop with color and graphics, so I'm ready to share it. And in Rush's share mode, what's really, you know, usually a time consuming and overwhelming process of me sharing my video to all of my social media channels, Rush makes quick and easy. So here in Rush's share mode, I can share my video to all of my social media channels and save a bunch of time because all of the information that I would normally have to enter from my video, I can do right here in the application. I'll set my thumbnail. This is a nice one here with JR. And then once I hit export, Rush is gonna take care of those export settings, those things that you don't wanna know about, shouldn't have to know about, like bitrate, codec, frame rate. Rush is gonna make sure that your video looks awesome wherever you share it. So let's recap. In just a few minutes, I was able to create and share my video from scratch, working seamlessly across my devices without being a video expert. Rush made it easy for me to focus on the story I wanted to tell, guiding me through the rest of editing, audio, color, and graphics. 
And that's the all new, all in one video creation app that's both powerful and intuitive, Premier Rush. Thank you. What's up, everybody? I'm about to shoot and edit my video today with Adobe Premiere Rush. Your lips are a conversation. That face is a song. If it's my imagination, stop me if I'm wrong. I need to know, know, know what do you need, need, need? What do you like, like, like? You can be cool. You can be shy. Say what you want. So, uh, so thanks, Danielle. Congrats to the Rush team. It's not every day you ship a new 1.0 product. This level of power has just not been widely available before like this. So it's really exciting. And Premier Rush is available now through Creative Cloud. It is free to get started. So check it out. So between the time-saving innovations we built into our video tools like Premiere Pro and After Effects and the intuitive, flexible, do-it-all nature of Premiere Rush, we're making it easier than ever before for any video creator to do their best work. 